you know, there are a lot of explanations. Um, but a lot of it has to do with um, the nature and the culture of the people who settled here in the 19th century and the development of the state in the 20th century. And a lot of it is, I'm going to say that a lot of it is biblical, but not in the way that people would expect. Um, Oklahoma is beautiful, but it's also hard. I mean, this is an amazingly hard place to live. The weather is unforgiving. Uh, the climate can be unforgiving. Um, the ways you make money, getting things out of the ground, whether it's getting crops out of the ground or getting resources out of the ground, can be highly cyclical, which means that the economy can be unforgiving. And in unforgiving climates, people tend to fall back on those things that they can take refuge in or have certainty in. It takes a particular personality type to survive that kind of environment. And these are often people who end up being very conservative. And what holds Oklahoma together is social organization, the small community, the small town, and religion. It's a deeply religious state. The state came into the Union dry. No state had ever come into the Union without liquor until Oklahoma did. You know, the temperance movement was big out here. Cary Nation was here. Right? You know, this was a place that lent itself to being conservative. Oklahomans are not usually in step with the country, but they usually find a place to help create an anchor amidst the chaos of national politics. I think part of that has to do with where these, uh, where these uh, men, increasingly these women, came from. There was a tradition of um, sort of the small town courthouse lawyer who went up to 2300 Lincoln to be a state lawmaker. And these were really, really creative thinkers. We wonder if we have that talent still, because Oklahoma politics has not been covering itself in glory the last few years. We seem to be increasingly dedicated to the notion that governing badly somehow proves that government's bad, instead of recognizing that maybe people want to have roads and schools and infrastructure and want to have safe streets and hospitals and prisons that actually reform people. We've had a collapse of voter participation in the state in the last decade, and we're not sure why. But if you look at the pattern of where turnout is really off, the biggest fall off in voter participation is south and east. Okay, that's where we have the biggest problems with participation. This is the part of the state that is most heavily populated by Indian country, where participation has always been lower, but where politics that matters is in the First Nations rather than in state government. So we have a population down there that isn't getting more affluent. There is not as much of an incentive to be socialized to participating in your community. So the communities are getting older, the young people of means and ability are largely leaving. Uh, you've got groups that historically don't participate as much in the form of Native Americans and African Americans in these communities. These declines of participation do happen to be coincident to efforts to tighten up access to the ballot and registration in the state. But a lot of it is just a loss of competition. When you have competitive elections, more people participate. And the bottom has fallen out of two-party competition in most of the state. There, there are two tales to be told here, okay? And one is to look at old Oklahoma versus young Oklahoma, okay? You look at the Oklahoma electorate right now, it's about 80% Anglo-white, okay? And it's an older electorate. It's an electorate largely over the age of 50, okay? It grew up here, it's largely from here. You look at the demographics of citizens in the state under the age of 25, one in two Oklahoma citizens, U.S. citizens who are Oklahomans under the age of 25 are not white. They're Hispanic, Native American, African American, or Asian American, 7% are mixed race. So 80% of the electorate's white, 50% of the electorate in the future isn't. And those voters, those demographic groups are overwhelmingly democratic. This is a demographic that's also a lot poorer. If you're elderly in Oklahoma, the odds are you don't live in poverty. If you're young in Oklahoma, the odds that you live in poverty are three times as great as that of an elderly person. 
So we have a young, disproportionately impoverished, disproportionately black, brown, and yellow minority population among our youth that's coming up. It's still Republican for the near future, but you get out 15 years from now, the electorate's a lot more Democratic. And it's not the old school, oh, I'm an Oklahoma Democrat, which is just a fake Republican, right? No, these are real honest to God national Democrats, okay? America is coming here. It's on the way.